Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch Want and thanks for logging on. Today we are looking at the DeWitt Academia New Emotion Retrograde 43mm in 18 karat white gold. This example is part of a limited edition of only 99 made with a special texalium dial and white gold case. Now since 2003, DeWitt, founded by Jerome DeWitt, has been something of a newcomer to the independent horology scene, and the retrogrades, which debuted with the company in 2007, represents something of one of their most important early launches and defining products. So, inasmuch as this watch represents a substantial part of DeWitt's modern identity, let's get a sense of how it wears, how it looks, and how it compares to other watches in the high horology, independent horology scene. Now, on my wrist, which is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, the first thing I'm going to note is that the watch is very comfortable and surprisingly good fitting. I mean, really, 43 millimeters, I expected it to wear with such a bold case, something like a Royal Oak Offshore, but the bottom line is, you can see it doesn't even begin to challenge the span of my wrist, and my wrist is below average in size. There's plenty of room left on both sides of the lugs, and the lugs, and you can see it best from this angle, are really, really, really short. They project maybe two or three millimeters beyond each edge of the case. This watch wears substantially smaller than something like a 42 millimeter Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, and I would say that it really doesn't feel any larger on the wrist than a contemporary 40 millimeter Rolex GMT Master II or Submariner. Now you can see the thickness of the watch is one item that stands out, and even though this is a dress watch, it has the proportions and the mass of a sports watch. For that reason, and with outcroppings along the flanks of the case that are going to block any sleeve or a tight cuff, the watch isn't necessarily a great companion with a sleeve, but very substantial. With a solid case back, all in white gold, with a matching 18 karat white gold clasp right here, it has a lot of substance to it. I mean, the weight is impressive, and that's with a leather strap. So, DeWitt definitely gives you a substantial watch. So the question becomes, with a comfortable fit, but an aggressive set of proportions, how does the watch stack up in terms of appearance to other watches in the high horology segment? Well, it's hard to compare it to anything directly. It reminds me most of older uh, Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth retrograde seconds watches. Although aesthetically, when I look at it, when I look at that bezel, when I look at the proportions, the case, and the strange hybridization of a dress watch and a sports watch style, what I'm really thinking of is almost what would happen if Vacheron Constantin did a Royal Oak Offshore. And that's sort of what I'm getting, because this multifaceted, almost cog style machined bezel really reminds me of the one, the Maltese cross motif bezel that's on the Vacheron Overseas line, but the proportions, the case, this, the thickness in relation to the span of the lugs, it reminds me of something like an offshore. And this watch is 12 and a half millimeters thick, so it's got plenty of stack height from front to back. And I did mention that it has a solid case back, so that case back weighing so much more than sapphire really adds a lot of heft on the wrist. And then there's the signature element, the retrograde seconds. And this is where I'm beginning to see the resemblance to the work of the Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth manufacturer. Now, of course, both of those watchmakers had left that concern by the time the Lasantier watchmaker became known for its retrograde watches. But the bottom line is the retrograde complication is something that is to this day associated with Genta and Roth, as well as the dress watch format with an expressive oversized case. So this DeWitt reminds me most of those mid-2000 arena by retros and the Daniel Roth corresponding models that likewise featured massive precious metal assemblies with retrograding complications. But it's the texalium dial that really sets this one apart. And when I say texalium, what I mean is that it's a woven, basically fiberglass weave, but with metallic elements sort of anodized onto those aluminum threads. And the result is that it has an incredible, almost three-dimensional effect to it. As you move it through the light, now, most recently we've seen this treatment used on the 2015 Hublot Big Bang Italia Independent Limited Editions. So if you look up the Italia Independent Hublot, you'll see a similar treatment. Jejo Lecoult has also worked with this in the past. It's something that's not common. 
It looks like carbon fiber in the way it's woven together, but because of those metallic aluminized elements, it has much more depth to it and it shifts and almost seems to move around like a background hologram in the light. It's very intriguing. And these painted numerals and the applied inner chapter ring, as well as the retrograde indications and the marquee at 12 o'clock, they almost seem to be floating on top of it. Like there's a lot of depth between those applied and painted elements and the texalium beneath. Almost like there's a couple of layers of sapphire between the two. It's very impressive. It's very nuanced. Now the retrograde itself, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit closer to show you some details of that, has some of the most impressive rose lathe guilloche I have ever seen. It's a very tight, almost splayed seashell pattern. I'm not sure that there's any specific technical terminology to describe it, but while it, dis while it sort of defies description, it's absolutely stunning in person, and the way it plays with light as that retrograde seconds hand draws your eyes across its surface is singular. And I feel like the dial is the strongest aesthetic feature of this David. From any angle, you get the three-dimensional impact of that Texalium background, plus you get playful features like these partially skeletonized hands at center, the floating impression of the numerals atop the Texalium, and even the thoughtful inclusion of two flanking Roman numerals on each side of the 12, so abreast of 12, a little bit of Roman numerals mixed in with the Arabic treatment. And you can also see how the, the Roman numeral treatment is used in every case where a 1 appears, so the 1 of 10, 11, 12, 1. Little nuances like that show that watchmakers put a lot of thought into the manufacture of a timepiece, and on a watch like this that is really all about style, all about expression, it goes the extra mile and shows that it's a timepiece as big, brutal, and expressive as it is, it's also subtle, nuanced, and thoughtful. Now the case flanks of the watch feature a combination of polished and sandblasted facets. Polished externally, and then you look within the wells of each of these carved out, almost coin style, internal ingle nooks, and there's a sandblasted treatment that contrasts beautifully. The same treatment is evident within each of these notches of the bezel. That contrasting between high polish and the sandblasted treatment, as well as the clear number of layers and the complexity of the facets on the flanks of the case, adds a lot of character, a lot of strength to this watch. And although it is a 3 ATM water-resistant dress watch, it has the proportions, it has the presence of a sports watch. Now the clasp itself is corresponding 18 karat white gold, and I really like the way DeWitt put it together because it is very solid. I mean, beautiful finish, Again, like the case, a combination of sandblast and high polish. Very substantial, nicely done, and a good match to a watch with this much character, substance, and nuance. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the caliber inside the watch, because it's got a great story behind it. Now, it's called the caliber DW1102, and it's based on an ETA 2892A2 base. But the bottom line is, it's got an impressive pedigree. Now, Jerome de Witt is a bit of a showman. He likes to claim lineage to well, basically every European royal house anyone can remember. He's claimed lineage to Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, King Leopold I, the first ruler of the constitutional monarchy of Belgium, Queen Victoria, Leopold II, Jerome of Westphalia. And that's impressive, but it's also a little bit hokey and somewhat beneath the dignity of a company that I feel is building legitimate high horology pieces. I'd rather talk about the pedigree of the movement and in that respect, this watch really shines because the ETA 2892A2 automatic caliber is robust, it's thin, it's well proven, but it's the module on top that really intrigues me. It's developed by the Atelier Genevois Horlogerie, better known as Agenor, founded by Jean-Marc Viderecht, an absolute masterclass. Since 1978, he's been designing complications for the likes of Harry Winston, MBNF, Van Cleef and Arpel, Romain Jerome, Arnold and Son, and for those of you who remember the only Panerai perpetual calendar ever made, the FER15 and FER16 Panerai for Ferrari editions, yes, he did that perpetual calendar module as well. As a true high horology firm, Agenor actually put a tremendous amount of effort into its retrogrades, and this watch features one of those signature Agenor complications within its caliber DW1102. That's why I feel when you combine the individualistic 
style of this watch with its substance, the eye for detail that the designers clearly invested in it, as well as the fantastic backstory behind the modular movement inside, this DeWitt Academia New Emotion Retrograde, one of 99 made, 43 millimeters in 18 karat white gold, is a compelling alternative to other large, aggressive dress watches in the high horology, independent horology sector. And if you think that sounds good, check it out on our website, Watch You Want. It just may be the watch you want.